All right, welcome back. I am still Blake Flannery, and this is my channel. Uh, so today, what we are going to talk about is chest rigs. We're gonna cover kind of what it is, which is pretty upfront and easy enough. Uh, we'll cover the whys of why you might want to run a chest rig over a different load bearing platform, and some of the differences between the types of rigs that you're gonna find out there on the market. Um, and some tips on how to set them up. On top of this video, it will directly link back to uh, another video that is also on the channel that talks about considerations for developing your overall loadout when it comes to how much ammo and munitions you're gonna carry. So there'll be a link to that in the description. I advise you that you go watch that video as well if you haven't already, so you have a better idea of what do I need to put into my rig uh, as far as overall volume, and that will help guide you into what type of chest rig should you wear or should you go for a different platform entirely. So without further ado, let's start talking about chest rigs. All right, so chest rigs, what is a chest rig? Simply enough, it is a piece of load bearing equipment that is meant to be worn on the front of your torso and carry your fighting load. Uh, you can also use chest rigs for more administrative reasons. Uh, they're very popular with hikers and even sometimes runners to carry completely administrative things like just water and your phone and wallet, right? Easy enough. Uh, you can boil them down into either your micro rig style or a, a more full and complete rig, a larger rig, all right? And we're gonna talk about the variances between those two. So out there, you can go with chest rigs, you can go with belt kit, you can do load bearing vests, although those are fewer and far between these days. Uh, or of course you have plate carriers. Now, Focusing on unarmored solutions, so not getting away from plate carriers, so just talking about chest rigs and belt kit. Uh, I prefer chest rig because it interfaces with a pack better than belt kit does. I can access everything on my own kit. I don't need somebody to dig into a butt pack on the back of my belt. I don't need to take off my gear so that I can access it myself. Um, and because of my experience as a recon marine and always wearing a very heavy pack, having that chest rig out in the front with all my fighting load on the front kind of helped just a little bit counterbalance the weight of that ruck. So I prefer chest rigs. A lot of the guys I work with, they preferred the load bearing vests um, and they stuck with the load bearing vests. There are some guys who preferred belt kit and they stuck with belt kit. All right, if it works for you, that's fine but my preference is chest rigs and it's what I would generally recommend to somebody who is looking for some kind of load carrying solution. So as far as what should you choose, you would kind of have to go watch the considerations for your ammo load up um, because that's what you really have to determine is just how much do you actually need to carry. Now this is talking about specifically building a fighting load. So when I'm building a fighting load, there's a few, a few categories that I need to keep in mind. Obviously there are magazines, right? My ammunition source for whatever weapon it is that I am carrying. I need to have a way of carrying extra magazines for that. So I've got mags. I need to have some kind of medical on there, an individual first aid kit, IFAC. And those are really two like pretty hard requirements uh, for your fighting load. Now, some guys like to run their medical in a finny pack, and that's fine, that complements the overall setup. I always prefer to keep mine on the fighting load itself. Additionally to that, you have signaling kit, you have a knife, and you've got water. Uh, for military folks, then you gotta start thinking about grenades as well. Um, if you can access grenades as a civilian, rock on. However, as a military individual, you can definitely expect to see frags and smokes and flashbangs. So you definitely want to be set up for that as needed. 
So if you don't need a whole lot of stuff, then that's where you can get into your smaller micro rigs versus a larger and more robust rig. If you decide that you need to carry a lot of stuff, then you can build out a very robust chest rig capable of carrying a very large fighting load, all right? So determine what it is that you need and then look for the equipment that will support those needs. Don't just buy equipment because you like the way it looks and then find a way to make it work for what it is that you need, okay? When it comes to deciding between a micro rig or a larger rig, again, we, there is that decision of how much do I need to carry, but what you'll find is that uh, these micro rigs, like this is a uh, Haley micro, uh, they're very limited in their capacity. And I've got a uh, Spiritus Mark IV, right? So it's limited in its capacity. However, if you are someone that either professionally or personally goes back and forth between wearing a plate carrier or just wearing a chest rig, then the micro rigs or even you know these placards that can be adapted towards rigs as well can be useful because if it's the same loadout you can clip this into your plate carrier and it's set up for what you need and then if you're just going to run a chest rig you can unclip this and either put your straps on it or attach it to a rig like the spiritus thing too so you have that extra carrying capacity that you need. You have all the things that you want. You have your mags, you've got your water, you've got your IFAC, you've got signaling kit, all that good stuff. So outside of that, micro rigs aren't great for military context um, because if just by itself, you know, I don't have a whole lot of capacity here. This one's set up to run a couple of uh, 762 mags. There's still some space in front. I could throw some utility items in here. I can maybe add some more mags if I wanted. Uh, but if I need to actually fill this loadout out, then I'm gonna need to buy more stuff to expand it. So like on this Haley rig, I have these Spiritus expander wings. So I can carry a little bit more on the outsides because something else that you are gonna to need to consider are comms. Do you run comms within your fire team, within your squad, if you're a military? Do you run comms if you have your own team out in the civilian world? If you do, you have to be prepared, obviously, to carry that. So now we're looking at attaching our micro rig to a larger platform anyways. Do I need all those components or can I just buy a rig that already is set up to provide me with the capacity that I need, all right? So there are some other things to think about in terms of if you wanna buy it and what kind of a rig you wanna grab. Uh, what I will say off the bat, or maybe not off the bat because we've already started this, but a chest rig does not make reconnaissance or recce, right? A chest rig is simply a load carrying platform. It is not a tactical task. Wearing a chest rig does not make you better at reconnaissance because it's, it's a task, right? Um, <clears throat> we would choose to go with chest rigs a lot of times over wearing our plate carriers because we were taking painstaking efforts to remain far away from all enemy and avoid contact because that is the point of going on dedicated reconnaissance missions is I'm avoiding enemy contact and to allow a little bit more passive cooling, I wear a chest rig instead of a plate carrier. And because I do have that heavy pack on, if you ever worn a pack with plates, then you'll know it's not very comfortable and that pack does not ride very well. But it does work really well with a chest rig. So I have more inherent comfort, the pack rides better, I'm not susceptible myself to any kind of further injury by that rear plate being crushed into my back with the ruck on. Uh, passive cooling, and again, with all that fighting load weight off of the front, it kind of helps just a little bit counterbalance the weight of the ruck. 
However, there are plenty of times that I have worn full body armor, plate carrier, helmet, gun belt, almost looking like I'm gonna go do direct action, performing a reconnaissance task because the environment was, we were far more likely to make contact or it may have been a more overt form of reconnaissance, right? Just because you're performing a recon task doesn't always mean that you are gillied up and crawling through the bush, all right? So just getting that out of the way. Um, we're also not here to sell you any of this equipment. So unlike some of the videos you may have seen where somebody tells you that this is recce and they have an Amazon link to some booty ass chest rig they're trying to sell you, I'm not trying to sell you a damn thing, all right? I've got all kinds of brands of stuff out here. Some have sent to me, some I purchased, and just trying to provide as much education on the subject as possible, all right? So I'm gonna start with the big old rig up front, and then we'll work our way through the rest of it. So going to the first one, because this is the most complete rig I have on the table. Um, this one uh, was built out to replicate the rig that I used while I was still active duty. Um, a lot of the stuff here was provided to me from Tracer Tactical. The platform is the uh, Tracer Tactical Stout Scout. So it's the, the actual platform is the Stout Scout. Uh, I've got inserts to hold all the magazines and I've got a uh, Spiritus pouch on the outside and this is my signaling kit. So I've got a small signal panel. I've got a red lens for map reading and signaling. Chem lights, buzz saw, uh, smoke grenades, all that stuff I need for signaling goes into this pouch. And it's robust because one of the things I would have to do on a lot of patrols and missions is I would be doing reconnaissance and surveillance before some kind of uh, offensive operation, whether it be a limited scale raid or it be a full on clear and hold attack by an infantry company. So I have to signal in the landing force to their zone and then potentially signal them further along on their route uh, and help them signal throughout their attack. So a lot of signaling stuff for that, setting up landing zones and beaches and everything else. So that's why it's fairly robust. Um, as far as signal kit goes, if you've got a small day panel, uh, some kind of a light, just a small red lens light and some chem lights and a piece of 550 cord so you can make a buzz saw if you need it, then you're pretty much set for most applications. All right, and then smokes from there. Uh, and then one of these smokes would be for immediate action drills, a um, smoke that puts out a high volume of smoke and that would be used for screening and breaking contact. And then another one would either be a secondary or it would be a colored smoke based off of a communication and uh, signal plan. Uh, I've got a couple of frag pouches on here just for the sake of having them using it as uh, an example. Um, don't carry frags anymore, um, but you know, they're on there. Water, this is one of those things that a lot of people I don't see putting on their chest rig because they primarily use their rigs as like a way of carrying their mags on the range, which if that's all you're using chest rig for, that's fine, right? But just understand that if you're gonna be using this for let's say we'll, we'll use the word operationally, all right? We're all operators operating operationally. You need water, right? Now, some folks like to throw, you know, like a uh, Haley flat pack or something connected to the back of their rig and have a camelback and that's cool. Personally, I have found that having a camelback on my back and then putting a ruck over the top of it isn't always uh, the most comfortable situation and I haven't tried it since Camelback improved their hose connection, but I had multiple hoses break off uh, when I put my ruck on. So I stopped doing that entirely. Between the comfort issue and having hoses break, I've just stopped doing that entirely. But if you're not wearing a ruck, again, you're just out in the woods with your boys or you're on the range or whatever, then having the small pack with a Camelback can also suffice, but you need to have water. And in this case, this water isn't actually for me to drink as I go along and get thirsty, this is for emergency. So if we make contact and we're trying to evade the enemy and we decide that we need to drop our rucks so that we can move faster, then this is now 
part of my survival water on top of the water procurement and purification items I would have within my kit. So really got to have water is something you definitely need to be thinking about, right? This is all of my IFAC, um, a lot of materials for stop the bleed and inclusive dressings because this is not, there's no body armor. So if I take a round to the torso, it's going in and probably going through. So I have uh, occlusive dressings and hemorrhage control aplenty in there. And then part of the IFAC, right, are your tourniquets. Tourniquets are your way of stopping a life-threatening bleed on an extremity. And I keep them up and accessible. I don't tuck them away into whatever the IFAC pouch I'm using. If I have IFACs or if I put tourniquets in an IFAC, they're just extra, so if I'm unconscious and somebody comes up to render aid on me and they need another tourniquet, sometimes uh, leg wounds require two tourniquets to stop a bleed, then there's an extra, right? But I carry two and I keep them up front where I can hold them and I prefer these J Tactical Solutions uh, for my tourniquets, but as long as you protect them, right? Just don't leave them out and exposed and do not do what the Ukrainians and Russians do and zip tie your tourniquets to your kit. There's been enough videos of that on the internet by now I would hope everyone realizes it's a bad idea. All right, and they're not all doing it. The dumb ones are doing it, which is saying something. So don't do that. All right, <clears throat> and then of course I have my stabby stick. All right, always like having a fixed blade knife. This one's from MB Blades, all right. Um, there's also another video on the channel um, covering the fighting load where I talk about this rig as well. So you can go watch that uh, video. I cover things a little bit more in depth, all right? But that is you know, a complete rig and something that I would wear on a vast majority of reconnaissance missions. Now, one thing you want to try and keep in mind, and it's a little, it's a little bit more difficult with chest rigs than it is like with your plate carrier, is the scalability of it all is that's why I like the tracer rig because I can pull some of these inserts out and if I don't need 10 mags, well, I don't carry 10 mags. If my QRF, my quick reaction force is within 30 minutes of my position and I can be ranged by friendly mortars, artillery, if I've got air support, if I've got all kinds of fire support and I'm close to both my logistics and troop support, then I don't need to carry a whole bunch of ammo, right? So I can reduce that loadout down especially if I'm going out with a larger force. If we're doing uh, reconnaissance with two teams and we've got 12, 14, 16 guys out there working out of a patrol base, and again, if I have support close by, I don't need as much ammo, all right? There's a volume thing to be considered. So that's that chest rig, right? It's fully built out. And some of these are gonna have a lot of those same capabilities. Uh, this one all right, is an old rig from uh, Special Operations Equipment. Um, they used to be based out of California, and now I think they're out of, uh, of Tennessee, maybe, or Kentucky. I don't know. Um, but this was meant to hold eight rifle mags, and it's got a couple utility pouches, and it was something that was sufficient at the time when I bought it when I was in the sniper platoon uh, of my infantry battalion. And then when I moved on and I got into force recon and started having my eyes opened up to things, I started realizing that that ring alone doesn't have the full capabilities that I needed, right? Eight mags uh, was our minimal loadout and we always set actually for 12. Two quarts of water, two frags, smoke, your radio, right? So this can't quite fulfill all of that. However, if your requirements are different, something like this, could work for you. Now, a big difference between these two rigs is this is essentially just a Molly platform, right? It's got two channels of inner pockets, so you can put inserts in there. This one is all pre-sewn and set, right? So it's really not a whole lot of modularity I can do to this. They did add this row of scuba webbing along the bottom to uh, be able to attach pouches to, and the company does also have uh, Velcro attachments that can sit on the fronts of these magazine pouches, 
all right? So there's some modularity to it, uh, but not quite the same as a full Molly platform. So this was good enough for what I thought I needed at the time when I bought it. All right, I've gotten some use out of it and I've just kind of held on to it over the years eh, because I, I like it. Um, and it more or less works for some, some things, but I can't carry all the same stuff that I can carry in this. So that's why it didn't work for me once I was you know, in force recon. And that's another th thing that you need to think about is if you buy a pre-sewn and set up rig, you are stuck with whatever that designer had in mind when he put all that together, that's essentially what you have to carry, all right? There's not a whole lot of modularity to it. Whereas if you get a Molly platform, now it's completely on you, right? It is gonna take more, uh, more money to build it out, but then you can also change it up as you go along. You can get one Molly platform and run that thing until it falls apart. And then you get another one and you change out your pouches and your setup as you go along, all right? So uh, another version, this one's from Parachuter Gear and they, they did send this to me. Um, and it's essentially the uh, TAPS rig that is standard issue with the uh, Marine Corps and the Army. It's kind of like an updated, improved version of that, which uh, they definitely accomplished, right? It has uh, seven internal magazine pouches. I've added some of these uh, newer HSGI taco pouches to the front. I've got my pouches on the side for water and signaling, and then the dangler for medical. And if I were to use this instead of that rig, I would just take the stuff out and switch it over, right? Easy enough. Now, something that you can see with these last three rigs is they're all pretty wide, right? In order to provide you with that larger load carrying capacity. Can you use something like this with a plate carrier? You can, but then what you need to do is either through your own ingenuity or through manufacturing, get an adapter so that you can buckle these to the side of your carrier, all right? Now you've got this huge thing that's gonna wrap around you and your armor rather than something like this that just clips into the front and it's secured and it's done. So I'm not a huge fan of the TAPS rigs and guys just arbitrarily wearing a chest rig over their plate carrier because it's issued to you, right? I did that uh, back before, you know, plate carriers, we were still running flak jackets and I had the interceptor vest. I bought a chest rig and I wore it over my interceptor vest. It worked well enough. It wasn't the most ideal solution. And as soon as I was able to transition to a plate carrier, that's the direction that I went, all right? So yeah, you can go with the whole chest rig over, kit, over the uh, armor solution that works. However, you're gonna find more than likely that just having a dedicated load out to your armor is gonna be better than trying to throw a chest rig over it. <clears throat> All right, so we've covered some of these larger rigs and why you would probably want to move to one of those instead of a smaller micro rig. And we've also kind of talked about a preset, all pre-sewn, kind of stuck with whatever the designer had in mind, or a Molly platform that allows you to customize it uh, and change it out as you go along and as you progress, uh, both as a you know an individual and then as your uh, job may change if you are in a professional environment. So now let's go back to the, uh, the smaller micro rigs, right? There's definitely, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, a lot of companies that have, like this is just simple placard from uh, Aussie Peelback, uh, but they set it up so that you can turn it into a chess rig if you so chose, right? Um, it has some capacity, all right, not a bad placard for your chest, uh, for your plate carrier. Um, not a whole lot going on as far as the chest rig is concerned. You can see there's not a lot of capacity just right here, okay? 
But again, depending on how you're overall kitted up, all right, something like this could work for you, all right? If you're in a business of uh, doing some low visibility surveillance and you may have to then go into the raid, uh, then having something like this that can be worn under a larger cover shirt or is just kept down and out of sight and then hop out, you have your fighting load and then you go into it, then something like this is really gonna be your bread and butter. All right, but otherwise, you know, trying to convert just a simple placard uh, into a chest rig, it's mostly just good for like carrying your ammo at the range. Um, I've got no way of really carrying any water or any kind of signal or anything like that. So it has to be very specific to what your needs are. Um, <clears throat> now we already kind of looked at, you know, like the Haley and the Spiritus. Um, I like the Spiritus better than the Haley because it is more modular, right? Uh, it's not modular in a sense of these two where it's actual pals and molly webbing. Uh, instead it uses all this pile tape, all right? So the fuzzy side of Velcro is our pile tape and then you have hook backed inserts that allow you to customize this. And then right now it's set up for three mags of 7.62 or two mags of 7.62, right? There's space in here. I could fit, you know, a, a Leatherman or something like that. I could do three mags of 5.56, I could do six mags of 5.56 or four mags of 7.62. I have 7.62, I have my Kestrel and uh, range finder in the front, all right? Uh, so it is very modular just in and of itself with the different flaps and zipper inserts and magazine inserts and everything else. And then because your back is all of this hook, right? I can take, you know, wing adapters and things like that and I can build this out put a dangler on it and have more overall capacity. Again, you are still limited in what it is you're able to carry. So if you're an infantryman or a constance marine or you're in a constance troop, something like that, this is very likely not going to cut the mustard for you, okay? However, again, if you are in one of those jobs and you go from armored to unarmored, then this could be good because you can have this clipped to your plate carrier and then if you're carrying the same type of weapon, you take it off and you clip it into your chest rig adapter and now your chest rig is completed with you know the two, three mags and whatever else you carry in this. Um, it could potentially make life a little bit easier for you instead of taking everything out of one rig, putting it over into this rig and then taking out of that rig and now it's going into your plate carrier and then it's gotta come out of your plate carrier, it's gotta come over here I cannot tell you the number of things that I have lost and misplaced in doing that shuffle of from rig to rig to rig. Uh, so instead, I just decided to invest and have like 18 of everything so all of my rigs would be complete and I ended up with more stuff than I wanted, right? <clears throat> so that's something to think about is the overall modularity uh, and then with that modularity comes scalability, right? Maybe I do just want just what I can get with this micro rig, right? Because again, with what I'm doing, I don't need to have everything on me if I'm working out of a vehicle, something like that, then this could be great. And then for those times where I'm not motorized or my mission set has changed a little bit, I can scale it up and end up with a more robust loadout, right? Um, and the reason that the, I like this one, I find it more modular than the Haley rig is because with this front pouch, although pretty useful with this elastic inserts and this pile field so you can put an adapter in there, you are kind of stuck with this being a utility pouch, right? So your signaling kit or range finder, stuff like that can go in here. Um, it's kind of more of a, a range thing for me. Uh, I picked one up. I bought to see if I could find a way to build this out to this uh, and it just wasn't, wasn't doable. There was no way of building this thing out and getting everything that was the baseline I needed uh, when I was active duty and recon teams onto a, a micro rig uh, without getting into the larger platforms it has to clip into. 
So they can be useful. And if you do your assessments on what your loadout needs to be and should be, and if you're a citizen out there and you just want to have uh, some kind of fighting load that you can carry, then you know a chest rig is not a, a bad way to go. Um, I would prefer you know a plate carrier, a small minimalistic plate carrier setup instead, because if I'm going to be going out and getting into a fight, it's smarter to have armor than not. But you're going to make your decision and go with whatever solution that you can afford and roll with at that time. So micro rigs can be useful. Again, you just want to look at the overall modularity versus things already being pre-sewn and pre-set because the designer had a vision probably for a need that they specifically had. And so a product was made for other people to use. Now you can still do a lot with the micro rig, the Haley micro with that front pouch and these, you know, pistol sized mag pouches, you can cram tourniquets in there, Leatherman's, all right. You can definitely make use of it. I just find that something like this Spiritus is more modular and scalable. So that would be my recommendation if you're going for these micros. And again, I wouldn't recommend overall a micro or a placard unless you are constantly gonna be switching it back and forth between a chest rig, unarmored setup, and then going back to your plate carrier because your mission set is continuously changing, all right? All right, so the last couple of examples that uh, we're gonna talk about and show you guys um, are really, really minimalistic and, and perhaps you know alternative uh, motive for what you're carrying. <clears throat> so this is the, the Spiritus Bank Robber, right? Yeah, obviously I've got nothing in it right now. This is a very simple, very easy thing that, you know, inexpensive that you can get. You can modify it just with one strap so you can run it as a bandolier. Um, something like this would be good to uh, set up and go in your pack. So you have your fighting load already, you got your ruck on, and then you got something like this that just holds a refit of your fighting load. So it's got, you know, a handful of extra mags, you could have some extra medical equipment on there. You could shove a, you know, a bang or something in there. The elastic makes it pretty versatile for what it can carry and hold in the pouches. Um, and I find something like this to be useful for that. It's just, I can load it out as a refit of my fighting load and that goes into my ruck, um, essentially like a, a bandolier. But, <clears throat> you know, there's a, one or two other companies out there that make something very similar or almost identical to this. They're not expensive. And so, you know, if that's what you want to roll with because you're limited on funds, then by all means. And if you're that guy that has like a bunch of different blasters and they all take different kinds of mags, again, that's really good because those elastic pouches will hold different size magazines. So that might be what you go with just to bring your stuff out to the range or whatever you want. Uh, but acting as kind of a supplementary uh, that you carry in your pack or in your vehicle, uh, I find things like that to be useful for it. Uh, and then this is from uh, Victos. Uh, they did send this to me. And it's essentially uh, just a little chest pack, right? It's kind of like a micro rig. Um, it has an internal pouch that you know I can add stuff to. It's got a small outside pouch. And then this rear pouch is actually set up to take uh, some rifle mags. It's got some slots for that, right? So this would not be something that I would, you know, be able to kit out and uh, go and do a reconnaissance mission with. But it is definitely something that I can take to the range. It's something I can take on a hike and just carry basic supplies with me. Uh, this would be like instead of wearing a fanny pack, if you don't want that hitting you down in the groin or bouncing off your backside, you know, something like a chest pack. Um, Hill People Gear also makes really excellent chest packs. So something like this is good for that. More of a non-tactical, right? I'm not worried about having necessarily a fighting load. I just have stuff. I don't want it in pockets. I don't really want to wear a fanny pack. I can wear this uh, chest pack style instead. But it's still worth noting because they're out there and not everything has to be uh, about being, you know, a gunfighter. This is, I can just have stuff to have it with me. 
So those are the, the basics of the different types of rigs. Um, and then uh, before we close out this video, just want to really harp on the idea that kit does not make a mission, right? You have your mission and then you need to tailor your equipment based on those requirements. So if you're planning on going and getting into a fight, wear armor, right? Don't wear a chest rig, oh, because it's hot, right? There are plenty of people who have worn body armor in very hot environments. It's not comfortable, which is why fitness is incredibly important when you're getting into this realm, especially if you're a professional. But if you're going to get into a fight where people are gonna be throwing lead and explosions in your direction, then it really doesn't make sense to lower your odds by wearing an unarmored solution. It makes more sense to wear a plate carrier. If you are going to conduct a mission where you are avoiding enemy contact and you are gonna be carrying a lot of extra equipment to sustain yourself in the field for long periods of time and conduct long range communications and observation, well, then the chest rig is gonna make more sense for that, all right? That doesn't make chest rigs recce, all right? And every other video that's out there where people try to tell you that uh, this is the recce loadout, if they've never actually served in that capacity, then they are just talking out the side of their neck. So take it with a grain of salt or for what it's worth, but this is just a load carrying item, right? Figure out what you need for your fighting load. What are the minimum items? And then have a rig that supports that. And then this is just the fighting load. So the argument that you need to have some kind of sleep system and 24 hours of chow and 48 hours of water and all these things of what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, to sustain yourself, that's not what this is for. All right, the chest rigs are not to sustain you out in the field. This carries all the things that you need when the fight pops off, should it pop off, all right? All the things that you need to keep you in the field, that's what your pack is for. That's where all your water's gonna be, your chow's gonna be, your layers, your sheltering materials. Those are gonna be in your pack. Now, can a trained person be dropped off in the woods with just their chest rig and survive for days? Absolutely. It will be incredibly uncomfortable, but it's doable. I could also hop in my truck and drive on the wrong side of the road all the way home. I could probably make it home. That doesn't mean it's a smart idea. So use what you need, actually analyze what it is that you need to be doing. And if you are a civilian, you're like, I'm unsure I don't have a mission. Well, you do have a mission. Your mission is defend. So if you have to defend and you're planning on defending and being in some kind of a gunfight with somebody, then if you're building out a fighting load, then it should probably be one with armor on it. And then, so therefore, that's where you might want to go to a small micro rig, right? Instead, that you can clip into your plate carrier. So please understand that, all right? It's not a mission set, it's just gear. It's just equipment. It is far more important that you go out and you get training and work on your hard skills, work on your soft skills, ingrain those into levels of unconscious competence so that you have the bandwidth available when situations go down to process what's happening and make quick and positive decisions on what you're doing. So please go get trained. A lot of people out there, obviously I am biased. I have my company Maneuver Training Solutions and I also am one of the cadre for Orion Training Group. A lot of the good ones out there, look them up, check the calendars, and if there is a class that is close enough to you, by all means, get out there, take a class, because not only will you learn more information from hopefully a subject matter expert, but you will also end up networking with other like-minded individuals and realizing that you do not need to remain isolated in your little bubble at home. You could actually network and we can build community and 
start kind of putting things back together. So this has been the video on chess rigs. I know this information is out there everywhere and I am beating the dead horse with it all, but there's a few key points I want to put out there for you guys and some more considerations for you. And that's all this stuff ever is, is considerations or kit considerations, right? So take it for what it's worth, apply it where you can apply it. By all means, let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time.